Living a genuine life begins with knowing the genuine from the counterfeit. We have to know what the genuine looks like. If we know what is genuine, we can tell the counterfeit from the genuine, right? These instructions are all tied together with the very first. Let love be genuine. That's just ahead on this episode of Guerrilla Christianity. Well, we are continuing our series in Romans, uh, riches in Romans, we call it, uh, picking out little nuggets of wisdom, little jewels of grace uh, from the words of Paul the Apostle to the church in Rome. And we have made it our endeavor to examine this letter in full over the summer months. We have just this week and next week, we're going to wrap up this series. But this week we have before us, it's sort of like, um, it reminds me of the book of Proverbs condensed down into just these 12 verses, verses 9 through 21 of Romans chapter 12. And after what we read last week, uh, that Paul began his, uh, con- in his conclusion that we ought to offer ourselves as living sacrifices for God in light of all that God has done for us. And so this week, we're going to continue to look at what it means to live differently for God. And the title of the message this week is Christian Living. Let us hear the word of the, word, of the, word of the Lord for us this morning. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live harmonious, or live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the, low, with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink, for by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads." Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father God, we ask for your Holy Spirit to descend upon us, to impart upon us the wisdom of the ages, the wisdom that you give to us from eternity, the wisdom that you have given us through your servant, Paul. May our lives reflect those lives that Paul exhorts in his letter. And so we ask, Lord, to be made more in the image of Christ through this teaching. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the whole of this teaching can be wrapped up in the very first words. Let love be genuine. Let love be genuine. Living a genuine life begins with knowing the genuine from the counterfeit. We have to know what the genuine looks like, and Paul maps it out for us. He shows us what the genuine looks like so that we can distinguish that from the counterfeit. Let me ask you something. Um, Real quick, I'm going to come down here. And I want to know, is there anybody here who has a $100 bill? We? Oh, okay, great, Tim. Come on, you're in the sermon now. So um, we haven't taken the offering yet. So let me have your. Make sure you get it up, right? Oh yeah, yeah. 
you have a hundred dollar bill? I do. Okay, can I have it? Sure. Okay, great. great. Perfect. Okay. Now you know you're never going to see this again, right? So. No. Oh, you can sit down. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. I, I'm, I'm kidding. I will give it back. Okay, so. Now, here's, here's, here's the trick. I have in my pocket a counterfeit $100 bill. If you can tell the difference between the two, I'll give you the real one back, okay? <laughs> all right. Now, you ready? All right, okay. All right, now, you ready? Now, I'm going to hold these up side by side, and if you can tell the difference between <laughs> the actual one and the counterfeit one... <laughs> I will give you back the real one. Okay. Okay. Which, which one is the counterfeit? <laughs> That's the counterfeit? Yep. No. Come on. Come on. You know how to play I'm this game. Server, okay. Huh? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So uh, now what is, what is different about that uh, bill? Um, there's a better looking person. I, I agree. <laughs> I agree 100%. That is a much better looking person on the front. Certainly and, smiling. And he have hair. He doesn't. That's true. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's, it's a bit bigger than the other one. There's also nothing on the back, uh, as you can see. So, yeah, I'm just having a little fun at your expense. So here's your uh, Thank bill you. back. Thanks. <laughs> okay, there you go. Thank you. Thank you for participating in this sermon. All right. So we can tell what is genuine. If we know what is genuine, we can tell the counterfeit from the genuine, right? Well, obviously, it was a little bit more obvious in my case. But, you know, for the sermon, uh, I needed to... Uh, show it a little bit more in detail. So this whole section here, and like I said in the introduction, it's very much like, it's like, uh, it's like Proverbs. And Proverbs, if you read the book of Proverbs, for the most part, each of the verses in Proverbs can stand on its own. Each one is a different instruction in wisdom. And it was written by Solomon, who was considered to be the wisest of all of the kings of the world. So the difference is that these instructions are all tied together with the very first. Let love be genuine. Anyone who has ever knit a, a, a garment, for example, a sweater, knows that when you knit or a pair of socks, you know, my, my, my aunt um, Reen used to knit socks all the time. And it used to amaze me that she would start at the, at the toes and she would knit it all the way up to the, the opening of the sock and then she would bind it off. But that whole sock was one single thread, right? And that's, that's amazing to me, that if you pull that thread all the way out, you, you'll unravel the whole sock. And it's the same with this. That the thread that runs throughout all of this teaching is, let love be genuine. He says, hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Now to hate, another way to translate that word is to abhor it. And to abhor is to recoil from something in disgust. That's how we are to treat things that are evil. But to hold fast to something is to cling to it. It's to cleave to it. The same language is used in Genesis, where it says a man will leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. That's how we are to hold fast to what is good, to make it a part of our lives. He says, love one another with mutual affection. Other translations say, love one another with brotherly affection. It's that uh, Greek word philia, which is uh, brotherly love. The, where we get the word Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Like family members, we're supposed to love each other like family members. In Christ, we are all brothers and sisters. In Romans 8, uh, 15, we read, for you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons and daughters by whom we cry, Abba, Father. He goes on to say, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. So if we are children of God, we are all brothers and sisters under Christ. And so we are to love each other with 
uh, brotherly affection or family affection, like family members. Jesus at the Last Supper said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. And then he says, by this, all people will know you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Love is the mark of a Christian. And not just any kind of love, but what Paul calls genuine love. Genuine love. It's love that is given freely, without guile, without reserve. It's not given begrudgingly. It's not like I love you because I have to. It's I love you because I do. Because God loved me first. He says, outdo, this is an interesting one. Outdo one another in showing honor. Outdo one another in showing honor. It's almost like he, he wants us to make it a contest to, to try, or try and one-up each other. If someone shows me honor, I should try to do more to him. Uh, genuine love means putting others before myself. Genuine love means putting others before myself. Perhaps it's better explained in Philippians 2 and 3, where he said, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Very wise words indeed. He says, Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. My whole life in Christ is realized in what God has done for me, and nothing I can do will ever match what he did for me. Genuine love means that I will spend my life poured out as an offering to God. In Romans chapter 12 and 1, remember, he said, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Then he says, be patient in suffering, or rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. When we go through trials, genuine love sustains us. Remember that hope is deeper than just desire. When we say rejoice in hope, we're not rejoicing in, oh, I hope the Eagles play well this season, you know? And there's a lot being made this year, the fact that the, the Cleveland Browns had an undefeated preseason, right? They have nothing uh, else to boast about, right? Uh, the Cleveland Browns have been kind of the, the, the whipping boys of the NFL for their entire history. Never won a Super Bowl. Of course, the Eagles haven't either. But, um, but, but, the, uh, but the joke is, that if you go online now, you can buy a shirt that says, Cleveland Browns preseason 2017 champions, right? Because they were undefeated, you know? You can't take that away from them. Of course, they may not go undefeated for the season, but we rejoice in hope. Not the hope that some uh, sports team will do well, but the hope of eternal life. The hope comes from faith, and the faith comes from the promise of God. So, in Hebrews 11 and 1, we are told, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. That's the hope we're talking about. And he says... Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. So we are to help one another. And where there is a need to the best of our ability, we should meet that. We're seeing that this week with how the United Methodist Church is responding to Hurricane Harvey in Texas. Even those who may not know someone who is down there, we're all affected because as Christians, as little Christ, we have compassion for those who are in need because God has compassion for those who are in need. God's compassion throughout the Old Testament and throughout the New Testament is He shows compassion for those who cannot do for themselves. And so he says to the people of Israel, you know, take care of the widows, take care of the orphans, take care of the stranger in your land. 
He says, because remember, you were once strangers in the land of Egypt. And so we are called as followers of Christ to have our genuine love be an expression of hospitality. He says in Hebrews chapter 13, let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. You ever think about that? That maybe somebody that you're extending hospitality to is an angel in disguise? That's kind of an interesting thought, isn't it? We come to uh, verse 14, and verses 14 through 21 can all be taken together because they all have basically the same theme. And he says, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. See, we're to, we're to take the, the moral high ground, not from a place of superiority, but from a place of genuine love. Genuine love. He says, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. It's a Christian's duty to attend weddings and funerals. Do you think about that? Uh, it is our duty to rejoice with those who rejoice, to weep with those who weep. Christ attended a wedding in Cana, and he also wept with the mourners at the tomb of Lazarus. Christ sets the example for genuine love. He says in verse 16, live in harmony with one another. Live in harmony with one another. Harmony is when different instruments or voices play different notes, but together everything sounds better than the individual note. And i got to illustrate this again. Um, for those of you who may or may not know music, and I know some, enough to be dangerous, I guess. So I'm going to not, not break the piano, hopefully. But if I play some notes on the piano, if I go... Right? It's very pretty, right? Chopin wrote this, by the way. Very pretty, right? Okay, but that's, that's just a melody. That's called a melody. And a melody is one note by itself. Now, but if I play... See? It's got harmony now takes on a totally different character. See, it, it has a, it, it's all these notes working together as one. You don't have to applaud, by the way. <laughs> um, it's all those notes working together as one in concert with each other. And he says, we're to be like that. We're to be in harmony with one another. Every note different and yet working together to make a beautiful whole. Genuine love means living and working together for a single purpose, like a symphony orchestra. And it goes back to Romans chapter 12 and verses 4 and 5. He says, For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same functions, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one of another. We are to live in harmony with one another. Then he says in verse, we're still in verse 16, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Genuine love means putting ourselves in places outside of our comfort zone. Not as some sort of icon, but coming alongside As an associate, Jesus, the Son of God, the second person of the the Trinity who sits at God's right hand, he ate with sinners. He associated with us. He was not haughty. He did not consider his own position as the second person of the Godhead to be a position of honor, but he lowered himself to us. And we are to follow that example. So do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. And he says, do not claim to be wiser than you are. Other translations say, never be wise in your own sight. And that comes from Proverbs, where it says, be not wise in your own eyes. Don't think too highly of yourself. 
Don't think more of yourself than you are. Actually, actually all wisdom comes from God. And so, we do not claim to be wiser than we are. Genuine love means thinking highly of others and not ourself. Okay? Verse 17 says, Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. Genuine love means I do not seek retribution for things done to me. There's a strength in this, and acting in this way quenches the flames of vengeance. Quenches the flames of vengeance. Think about that. If, if, if you act toward me in a way that offends me, and I, I act back, what happens? There's this vicious cycle of, you know, and no good can come of it, and ultimately you end up with two people who hate each other with a, with a passion. But if someone offends me, and I respond with love, and not just a fake love, but a genuine love, what that does is it diffuses the whole situation. And it ends the cycle of vengeance in one act. So repay no one evil for evil. And these, this verse also works in concert with the rest of the text, verses 18 through 21. If possible, he says in verse 18, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. We have to do our part to promote peace. I think of the flower children protesting uh, the Vietnam War. Have you ever seen the pictures? It's amazing to me. Of uh, the National Guard would come out with their rifles. And what would the flower children do? They take little daisies and stick them in the barrels of the rifles. What an amazing thing. You know, peace begins with us. There's this great song in the hymnal that says, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Peace begins with us. He says, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. And then he says, beloved, never avenge anyone, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. He he, uh, quotes from Deuteronomy chapter uh, 32 and verse 35. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. God does not let wrongdoing go unpunished. Ultimately, God is the judge who condemns, not us. So genuine love means radical forgiveness and not retribution. Genuine love means radical forgiveness, not retribution. Then he says, to the contrary, no, If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Now he's quoting again, this time from Proverbs chapter 25, verses 21 and 22. Now, much has been said by a lot of commentators about what it means to heap burning coals on the head. Personally, I think that a lot of times you you can look at the Bible and it just means what it says. Not that they are literally heaping burning coals on somebody's head. It's an idiom, right? But think about, when you feel shame, what happens? Your ears turn red, your face turns hot. You feel shame. And I think that's what what Paul is talking about here. If somebody does evil to me, and I repay him with good, then he's ashamed. And his shame will convict him. And his conviction will transform him, you see. By, by acting in genuine love, we, it means being infectious. Genuine love means being infectious in our hospitality and, our, and love for our enemies. Genuine love means treating others as we would like to be treated. The golden rule. And finally, he says, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Darkness is overcome by light. Light is never overcome by darkness. If there is darkness and you shine a light, the the darkness is overcome. But if you have a light, there's no such thing as darkness that you can shine darkness, right? So light overcomes darkness. Darkness does not overcome 
the light. So he says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So, in this passage, Paul calls us to genuine love, not a counterfeit love. And then he endeavors to show his audience what genuine love looks like. In order to distinguish the counterfeit from the genuine, we must first understand what the genuine looks like. Just like we could spot the differences between real and fake money, in the same way people around us can spot the difference between genuine and counterfeit love. Are we acting a certain way just because we want others around us to think a certain way about us? Or are we acting from a place of genuine love? When we give, are we giving out of obligation or are we giving because giving is an expression of the love we have for others through Jesus Christ? See, genuine love is a response to the love that we have been given by God. We are consumed by the Holy Spirit and what comes out of the flames of the refining fire is at its core pure and genuine and true. So let love be genuine, as Paul says, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. My prayer for us today is that our families, our friends, and our community will see the people of this church as an example of genuine love, the love that God has for the world, the love that Christ shows us on the cross. Let us pray. O most gracious God, we thank you for your example of genuine love in Jesus Christ. When we consider the life that he led, Lord, when we consider the stories that we read about him in the Bible, and probably all the stories that have not been told about him as well, what an incredible life of love he came to live among us, humbled himself to to be with us, And so, Lord, let us be an example of that genuine love to the world. Let this church be a light, a shining beacon in a world of darkness, that we may push the darkness back. Let us overcome evil with good. Let us show radical hospitality to our friends, to our neighbors, even to people that we maybe don't think so highly of, maybe to our enemies. Lord, convict our hearts. Lord, show us what it means to have genuine love and fill us with that love from your Holy Spirit. All this we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. If you live in the Salem County area, you can join us in person. Ebenezer United Methodist Church in Auburn holds its worship service at 9 a.m. And Hudson United Methodist Church in Pedertown holds its worship service at 10.30. We also have Bible study during the week. Now, if our message today has touched you in some way, won't you let us know in the comments? And consider sharing it on the social media platform of your choice. You can also access this podcast through the Podbean app on Android or on iTunes. Just search for Guerrilla Christianity. Keep listening, keep growing, and I pray that God will continue to bless you in your journey of faith. Amen.